So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Matt and in this video we'll be going over some inequality graph past exam questions. Now as always there'll be a copy of the questions in the description below for you to have an attempt at either before watching this video as we go through the answers or while watching as we go through the answers. Now before going through some past exam questions on inequality graphs it's important that you have some form of understanding over this particular topic and I'll include a, a link to the lesson in which we go through this in more detail. Now in terms of prior knowledge that you need to be able to do before working through and being more confident when we're working with inequality graph questions is to be able to recognize straight line graph equations. So you need to be able to recognize when an equation represents a horizontal line, a vertical line or a diagonal line. Now that's usually based on the content and the format of the equation. So here looking at this now, particularly with inequality graphs, this is different to inequality quadratics. So when you are dealing with a horizontal line, that will always be a y equals a number involving no x. If you have a vertical line, that will be x equals a number because it'll only be going through the x-axis. And when you have an equation that involves both x and y, it's going to be a diagonal line. And that will usually follow the format of y equals mx plus c. So it's really important that you're able to see an equation and know what it looks like. Now, when I teach this topic to my students, I always say, whatever letters you can see in the equation, that is the axes the line will intercept or so go through. So if you only see a y in the equation, it's only going to intercept the y axis, which therefore is always going to be a horizontal line. If you only see x in the equation, it's always only going to intercept the x-axis so it must be vertical and if you see both x and y then it's going to intercept both axes so therefore the line that's being drawn has got to be diagonal. Now the next thing we move on to is being able to plot equations from an equation so typically y equals and x equals a number should be just be drawn you don't need a table of values for that however if it represents a diagonal line where it's got y equals mx plus c or involves both x's and y's you may need to draw a table of values. Now, technically, when drawing a diagonal line, you only need to know two coordinates, but to play it safe, always try and go for three so that if you do make a silly mistake, it's easier to spot. Now, when drawing a table of values, I would always opt by choosing three small values of x that makes it easy for you to substitute in. So if I just do this here, so I have x and y, and then for the x values, this is something that you just make up. So I would always opt and recommend students to go for 0, 1 and 2 because it's easy to substitute x equals 0. It's easy to substitute x equals 1 and 2 respectively. And then you then substitute those values to find the y ordinates. And then from there, what you would then find is you've then got your coordinates that you then plot and then draw with a, with a ruler joining those points up and extending your line going up to the extremes of the graph paper that you've got. The next point is to know when to draw a dashed line or a solid line. Now you do a dashed line whenever you have a less than or a more than and you do a solid line whenever you've got a less or equal to or a greater or equal to. And so it's just important that you know. So if you've got one of those, it's going to be a dashed line, solid. Now in terms of the dashes, it just needs to have gaps. It doesn't matter how big the dashes are. And finally, you also need to know what side of the line is required based on the inequality. So again, if it's less than or less or equal to, you're either looking at the left, which is basically where the inequality is pointing towards, or it's going to be below. And if your inequality is greater or greater or equal to, then it's going to be to the right because it's pointed to the right or it's going to be above. Now, this usually applies depending on the order in which an equation is written. Now, before we get started working through these questions, a little reminder that you can download and have attempt at these questions by simply clicking on the link in the description and it will send you to either a PDF or a Word document of the questions that we're going to go through. Alternately, what you could do is just pause the video as I read through the question, have an attempt at it, and then just unpause as we go through the answer. But obviously, it's going to be a little bit difficult because obviously it is going to involve a fair amount of drawing. So let's get started on question one. So on question one, it says that on the grid, identify the region represented by, and then we've got our three inequalities. 
So let's have a look at doing this. So now I'm going to do this freehand without the use of a ruler just to save a bit of time. Uh, but again, if you had this in exam, you would have to use a ruler. So the first thing we're going to do is now when it comes to plotting equations, to plot them, all you need to do is just plot by replacing the inequality with an equal sign. Uh, well, not x equals, with an equal sign. So here I'm going to plot x equals 5, here I'm going to plot y equals 4, and here I'm going to plot x plus y equals 6. So looking at x equals 5, now that is going to be a vertical line because it's only going to cross the x-axis and it's going to intercept at 5. So what I need to do is draw a, a solid line, so I don't know why I've started with dashes, so let me just quickly do that relatively accurately and do my dash line there. Now there is no expectation in exams to label your lines but I'm going to label it just so you can see what I'm doing. So here, this line here is x equals 5. The next equation for me to then plot is y equals 4. So I'll choose a different colour and I'll plot y equals 4. And that's going to be a horizontal line through 4. And it's going to be a solid line because there is an equal sign there. And so I can then label that as y equals 4. Now the next line for me to plot is x plus y equals 6. Now, when you have this in this court, in this ordination, so you could have x plus y equals 6. Now, there is a quick way of doing it. It's basically when x is 0, y equals 6. So it's going to be 0, 6. And when y equals 0, x equals 6. So my two coordinates are going to be here and here. So all I then need to do is draw a line that's going to be dashed from one of those coordinates to the other. Now again, your line should be a lot straighter than mine, but that's basically what we have. So I've got x plus y equals 6. Now, the next thing we need then need to do is look at which area is going to be shaded. Now typically, again, using your common sense, it's always going to be the shape that's drawn by joining those sides together. So this one is going to be most likely going to be here. Now, if you were ever unsure, it could have easily been here, but it's not. But let's just define on how we actually get that. So looking at this first equation here, let me choose a different color. So let's go for yellow, just highlight it. Now, this is basically mean because the inequality is less than or less or equal to in this case, then it's going to be on the left of that line. So we're looking at this side of the line on this equation, on the purple line. The next one is again so it's going to be to the below that line so this is below because again we're looking at less or equal to so that's going to be going in this direction and then with our diagonal line that's going to be above so it's going to be above that diagonal line so that's why the region that we need to highlight is this bit here but it's not might not always be the triangle because again this trapezium that you can see here uh, actually not trapezium pentagon that you can see here could also bin the re the region r as well moving on to question two it says joe draws his graph to identify the region r represented by and then he's, he's drawn the plots now the question is asking us to write down two criticisms so we need to think about two things that he's done wrong uh, so looking at this if we just have it as one and two so we can see the graph on the equation so here region r so for this, let's have a look at what the inequalities are for this one. So for R, or Joe's R, shall I say, let's see if he's actually plotted this correctly, because obviously signs show that this is not going to be the case. So for Joe's R, we're looking for below this line, so that's going to be Y is less than X plus 2, so that's the first one. For this equation here, we want above, no, so below that line, so that's going to be y is uh, less than 3 minus x. And for this line here, we are going to be one to, we've done that one, it's going to be this one here. We've got x 
is so from this line here which is x equals 3 we want the left so that's x is less than 3 so what we're now going to do is going to compare these from the graph to what he was actually supposed to plot in these here and let's see if they do work out so comparing this one with this do those two things match and I've not done the inequality so let me just make sure that that there is correct so there it's a solid line so that should be a little line there and that one is correct so he's plotted that one correctly so let's have a look at the next one so here you can see that this is different to this so the first criticism is that he has marked the wrong side of y is less than 3 minus x so again you could say what he's plotted but there you go the next one is again correctly plotted so that one's fine so then let's have a look at what it should you should have plotted now looking at this equation the one that he should have plotted is going to be to the left so let me just go back so for this we want the left of this line so x plus 2 which is here or above that should be really so we want sorry below so we want below that line so that's this region here so let me just highlight all of that we then want the now let me just get rid of all these colors so you can actually see what i'm doing and there we go so that one's highlighted in yellow for blue we want the left or above the line of y equals 3 minus x which is here so i want this region here which i've highlighted and then finally for this one i need the left of that line so i want this region here now the bit that i'm wanting is the bit that's shaded in all three colors which as you can see is going to be this region here so basically he has marked the wrong region r and again you can show that by showing what he should have where he should have put the r so the r is in the wrong place Moving on to question three, it says the region R satisfies the three inequalities and it says show the region R on the grid. So what we need to do is plot these. So again, starting off with this, this is going to be a horizontal, a vertical line through minus three. So let me do that. And it's going to be dashed. So it's going to be a line that looks like that. And I want the region that is on the right of that line. The next one is x plus y, and that is a plus, believe it or not. So we'll just make that a little bit clearer. So x plus y equals 2. So again, for this, I need to pick two values. So I'm going to go for x equals 0. So when x equals 0, y is going to equal 2. So one coordinate is 0, 2. And when y equals 0, x equals 2. So the other coordinate is going to be 2, 0. So if I just plot those two points, the next thing for me then to do is to draw a line which is going to be solid because it can equal that number. So let me just do just that. Again, yours should be a lot more accurate than what I'm doing on the screen simply because um, it's a lot easier to do this on paper than it is on the computer. And I want uh, below that line so I want this region here and the final one is this one here's the next one so let's just do that one so y equals x over 2 minus 1 so if I pick some coordinates so x equals y equals and let's just pick some numbers now the reason because we're divided by 2 I'm going to go for 4 coordinates rather than 3 so when x equals 0 is going to be 0 divided by 2 which is 0 take away 1 which is minus 1 when x equals 1 it's going to be a half take away 1 which is minus 0 0.5 when x equals 2 that's going to be 0 when x equals 4 4 divided by 2 is 2 take away 1 is 1 so the next thing I then need to do is just plot the nice easy coordinates so I'm going to plot this one here this one here and that one there so 0 it's at minus 1 so let me just use a different color to one I've used let's use blue so at 0, it's at minus 1. 
at 1, it is at 0 0.5, so that's going to be there. 2, it's at 0. And 4, I can't, uh, four I can't plot because I just can't. So here I've got the two coordinates. So then all I've then got to do is just draw my line through those two points, which looks something like that. And is it a solid line? Yes, it is. And I want above that line. So let me just change the color if I can. I don't think I can. Um, so and I want above that line. So the region R that I'm going to be shading is this region here. Let me just extend those dashes. So it's going to be this region here. Like so. Moving on to question four, it says ABCD is a rectangle and X is the line of symmetry. These inequalities describe the shaded region. Write down the values of P, Q, R and S. So as it's symmetrical, what we want to do is just look at the coordinates and use them to help us measure the distance. So here, this distance here is going to be 3. And so that means that this distance here is going to be 3. Now D has got the same x ordinate as A because it's parallel. So it's going to be minus, three, uh, minus 2 rather. And it's going to be minus 3. For, and then doing the same, that's going to be 3 and it's 6 across. So it's parallel, so the x-ordinates are going to be the same, but that's also going to be 3 down. So that's going to be minus 3. So here I've got my coordinates of P, Q and R and S. So let's just have a look at each of these. So this line here is going to be, so looking at this in terms of the x, x values, well it's going to be between minus 2 and 6. So that's going to be minus 2. And this is going to be 6. And looking at the difference in the y ordinates, I've got positive 3 and minus 3. So it's going to be minus 3 and positive 3 there. Then moving on to B, it says the grid shows the graph of y equals x plus 2. And it says on the grid, identify the region represented by y is less than x plus 2. And y is less than or greater than 3 minus x and x is less or equal to 3. So what I need to do is just work these three out. So looking at the first one, I'm going to draw my table of values of x plus 2. So again, if I just draw x and y and pick three plus small numbers for x, substituting them in, I'm going to get 0 plus 2, so that's 2, 3, and 4. So 0, 2 is there. Well, actually, it's already been plotted, so I don't need to worry about that one. So that one's above. Then for the next one, y equals 3 minus x. So again, another table of values. Three small numbers. I don't know why I've put a 1 there. Let's get rid of that. 1 and 2. So substitute numbers in, I get 3, 2, and 1. So 0, 3 is there. 1, 2 is there. 2, one is there. So I'm going to use my ruler to draw to do that. And again, I'm just going to kind of use a dashed line to do that. And I want above that line. And so let me just extend that a little bit further. And then, and then for the final bit, we then need to plot x equals 3 which is going to be a vertical line. So if I just draw that, and that's going to be with a solid line. So let's just get be a bit more accurate this time. And again, a little reminder that you do need to make sure you are using a ruler to draw these lines, even if it's dashed. So this here is my x equals 3 line. And you can see that the arrow is pointing towards the left. So we want this side. So all that's left for me to then do is to shade in the region that is R, which is going to be this region here. And again, shading is optional, but definitely encouraged. And there we go. Question five. It says points are shaded in the region that satisfy the three inequalities. Use the inequalities to describe the shaded region. So for this, looking at this, this is going to be this line here is a solid line. 
and it's also a vertical line that cuts the x-axis so that line there is x equals 2 now the region that's shaded is the right of that so then one of the equations then is going to be x is greater or equal to 2. Now looking at this next line here, this line here, that's going to be y equals 1. Now I want above that line so it's going to be y is greater and it's dashed than 1. So that's the other line. So the next line for me then to do is this line here. Now for this, what you could do is basically look at the coordinates. So here I've got x and I've got y. Now if I've got 0, I've got 1, I've got 2 and 3. So then looking at the values, I've got 7, 6, 5, 4. Now what you could do is look at sequences. Now if I ignore the 0, because when you're doing like the nth term, you ignore the zeros. So here you can see the difference is minus 1. So it's going to be minus 1x, and then to get from minus 1 to 7, to 6, sorry, I need to add 7. So then the formula then is going to be y equals minus 1x plus 7. But any equation that goes from one number to its respective number to the other side is basically going to be known as uh, aka. Now I want below that line, so I can get rid of the equal sign and go for below, and that's the equation there so I can write it as either x is less than minus x plus 7 or I could write it as x plus y is less than 7 and let me just make that a little bit neater because I don't know what that looks like and you should have something that looks like this so the three equations you should have are x is greater or equal to 2 y is greater than 1 and x plus y is less than 7 or that y is less than minus x plus 7. So any of those would be fine to get the full marks. Moving on to question 6, it says points in the shaded region satisfy these three inequalities and it says one of the inequalities is y is less or equal to 2x plus 5 which is this line here. And the question is asking, circle the inequality with the boundary of A. Now here, line A goes from 7 to 7, so that's going to be x plus y equals 7. Now I want below that line, so that means that this, I get rid of the equals, and it's going to be less than. It's also a dashed line, so I don't need an equal sign. So I'm looking for this, which is our second option. For line B, Again, what you could do is just look at the equations of a line. So here you can see that if I look at y equals mx plus c, I can see that that line intercepts at 2, the y-axis at 2. So that's going to be plus 2. So the next thing for me then to do is to work out the gradient. Now the gradient, if I look at the triangle, that's with a height of 2 and a base of 4. So m is going to be 2 over 4 which is a half, so then the equation is y equals a half x plus 2. Now I want above that line, so then I replace the equal sign with a greater than, and it's solid, so it's going to be greater or equal to, so there is the one I'm looking for. Now you, you can see that in the four options on the screen that this is not one of them, so if I multiplied everything by 2, then I end up with something that looks like this. And as you can see, that there is option one. Moving on to question seven, it says work out the three inequalities that describe the shaded region. So this line here is, I don't know why I've put an x, should be y equals five. This line here is x equals two. And this line here is y equals x. So the next thing for me then to do is just decide on the inequalities. Now the shaded region is the on the right of this line. So that's going to be x is greater or equal to 2. Now in terms of this line here, y equals 5, I want below that line. And it's going to be solid, so I want y is less or equal to 5. And then regarding y equals x, I want above that line. So that's going to look like that so x is greater or equal to y 
Moving on to question eight, um, again, it says use inequality to describe the shaded region on the grid. So first of all, let's work out what these equations are. And I don't know why I keep writing X. So this line here is going to be Y equals two. This line here is going to be X equals three. This line here is Y equals X. And this line here is X plus Y equals eight. So the next thing for me then to do is just decide whether it's greater or equal to less or equal to less than or greater than. So I want the shaded regions on this side of the line. So that's going to be X is greater or equal to three. So if I just write down these equations, so X and Y, Y and two and X plus Y and eight. So moving on to this equation here, the shaded region is below that line. So that's going to be a less than and it's dashed. So there's no underlining line that needs to go in for Y equals two. It's above. So that's going to be greater than and it's dashed. So again, no equal sign. And then for X plus Y equals eight, that's a solid line. And I want below that line. So that's going to be less or equal to. So all the inequalities are going to be those there. And you would get a mark for each one of those that you write. For question nine, it says put the label R in the region on the grid that's satisfied by all three of these inequalities. So X is less or equal to three. So it's going to be a solid line cutting through the X axis at three. And again, you should be using a ruler. Y is Y equals X is going to be the next one that you draw. So just do your best for your eyes not to go nuts on that one. And I want above that line. So that's going to be above there. And I want the left of that line. And then the last one for me to draw is this equation here. So again, I'm going to use a table of, well, I could just substitute the numbers in. So here, x equals 0, 0 times 2, take away 1 is minus 1. So that's going to be there. When x equals 1, 2 times 1 is 2, take away 1 is 1. And then 2 times 2 is 4, take away 1 is 3. So that's going to be there. So all I need to do is just join those three points up with a line. And it is going to be a solid line through those points. Again, just want to try and do it as best you can. Mine's going to not look extremely accurate, but it should look something like that. And let me just label that. So that's y equals 2x minus 1. And I want below that line. So the region that satisfy all of those conditions are, is going to be this region here. And I'm going to label that as R. Moving on to question 10, it says on the grid, uh, draw lines to show the region satisfied by these three inequalities. So here I'm going to plot y equals 4 and I want the left and it's going to be a solid line. This I'm going to draw y equals x and I want below that line and it's going to be a solid line. And here I'm going to draw y x plus y equals 4 and I want above that line and it is a solid line. So plotting each of those, so x equals 4 is going to be this line here, which is actually not that bad. Um, x plus uh, x equals y is going to be again should be drawn a lot straighter than that. Y equals x, and the final line is from four zero to zero four, and that's going to look something like that. That's x plus y equals 4. And the region that satisfy all of those is going to be this bit here. And there we go. Then moving on to our last question, it says points in the shaded region satisfy three inequalities. One of the inequalities is y is less or equal to five. Which of these are the other two inequalities? So what we need to look at are the lines of these. Now this line here is y equals five. So that one's been done. So the next line I then need to work out is this one here. Now the equation of that line, again, it's going to, if I use the format of y equals mx 
plus C. Well, the y-intercept is positive 2, so that's going to be plus 2. So the next thing for me then to do is to then work out what the, y, the gradient of that line is going to be. So if I find two nice coordinates, I'm going to use these two. I can see that's got a base of 2 and a length of 4, sorry, height of 2. So the gradient is going to be 2 over 4, which is a half. So that's going to be y equals a half x plus 2. Now the shaded region is above that line and it's solid. So that means it's going to look like that. So what it should be is this. And that's the other line. So if I just find that equation, which I can't see, so then if I multiply everything by 2, I get that and that we should be able to spot is D. So then finding out this next line, which is here, again, that's a straight line graph. So write Y equals MX plus C. This line intercepts the X axis at 3. So that's going to be plus 3. So the next thing for me then to do is to find out what the gradient is going to be. So again, I'm going to pick two nice coordinates. Let's go for these two. And that's got a height of 2 and a base of 2. So that's going to be 2 over 2, which is, and it's going down. So it's going to be minus, which is 1. So y, and then it's going to be minus x plus 3. Now I want above that line, so it's going to be there, and it's solid, so that is the equation that I'm looking for. So out of the ones, where can I possibly find that? Now I might need to do some rearranging, so if I take the x over to this side, I end up with x plus y equals 3, or is greater or equal to 3. Well actually I should have spotted that one straight away actually. Um, so that's the equation I'm looking for, and that is equation B.